Hey, it's Danielle from Wendell Woodworks. The temperature just dropped here in Northeast Ohio, so it is beginning to feel like fall, and there is no better way to celebrate that than with a good scroll saw project. So today I'm gonna share three simple scroll saw projects to get you in the fall mood, and you can do these no matter what your skill level is. Plus, they're just really cute decor items, so that's always a win as well. The patterns you'll see me use in this video were my testers of sorts, so I've cleaned them up a bit for you. They're gonna look a little different, but still be the same thing, and I put them in the description below for you to print off and use. First up, we have leaf votives. I chose a chunky piece of reclaimed pine for these, but any wood will do. If you want to use candles, it's best to use wood that's at least 3 4 inch thick so that you have enough room. Usually I cover my wood with painter's tape and I'll add the pattern using spray adhesive, but I was all out of both tape and glue today, so I jankily just chafed the pattern with masking tape. Sometimes you just make it work and there's nothing wrong with that. Next, I took my wood to the scroll saw. I wanted to use one of my modified geometry blades, but unfortunately I discovered that I was out of those as well, so I immediately had to put it in order. And in the meantime, I chose a number seven reverse tooth blade from Olsen. It did the job just fine, but I did notice that it got dull and it burned out much more quickly than my usual modified geometry blades. If you're a beginner, the good news is that no one will know if you veer off the pattern lines. Leaves are all unique anyway, so just try to keep the line fluid as you go and let the scroll saw do the work for you. By this, I mean don't push the wood through faster than it wants to go. Just take it slow around the curves and you can't go wrong. And before creating the inner lines, I took the leaves to my drill press and I drilled the hole for the candle with a one and a half inch spade bit. If you don't have a drill or a bit, you can just get this part. The leaves are super cute on their own just for decoration. Once my hole was drilled, I put my pattern back on and then I went back to the scroll saw to do the veining. This time I followed the line in with my blade and backed it back out. I then sanded it again with 250 grit. I blew off the dust with my air compressor and I stained them in different colors. I used a red stain, a classic oak, and a special walnut stain from Minwax. Once that was dry, I gave them each a few coats of polyurethane and I placed my little votive inside. I like these battery operated candles better just because they're safe and they actually last longer. I'll stick a link to those in the description below. Next up, we have 3D pumpkins. If you don't like my particular pattern, no worries. Just learn the basics here and you can replicate it in your own way. My pattern line is made for a half inch thick piece of wood. But if you're using wood that's a different width, you'll need to adjust the inner line so that it's the same width of your board. This part will get cut out so that the two pieces will connect at the end. So I'm redrawing my lines here just to make sure that I get the right width. Once again, I am jankily taping on my pattern with masking tape, and in this case, to a piece of cedar fence board. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm going to cut them. Ideally, I would have used a number five modified geometry blade, but as I said before, I was out, so I just opted for a reverse tooth Olsen blade. And at the end, they should fit together. Sometimes you'll have to adjust this a bit to get a good fit, but it's better to cut a little too small initially than too big. And if you need to, you can always use a rubber mallet to hammer it in to get the pieces that connect all the way. You can leave these natural or give it some orange paint to give you some fall color. And finally, if you want a wee bit more of a challenge, I made a floral pumpkin design that you can cut out and stick to any backing that you want. I'm going to cut this out on a quarter inch MDF. And on this piece, I wanna create just the outline of the pumpkin. So I'm cutting out all of the inner white parts. In order to do this, I'll need to make pilot holes in every enclosed area, and then I'll cut them out one at a time. If only we could cut as fast as the time lapse here. Once it was done, I sanded the top and the bottom. I sprayed my pumpkin with my favorite automotive primer spray and then white spray paint. And to finish, I glued it with wood glue and a little bit of CA glue onto a piece of reclaimed mahogany to sit for decoration. And just like that, we're ready for fall. Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope that was helpful. And to find some more scroll saw tutorials, you can check out more right here. Happy scrolling.